Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Pack one, pick one, approach of the second sun. Yeah, that could be a pretty fun challenge to build around. So this is going to be great in probably a blue-white deck that has access to some card draw. Cycling, of course, good with approach as well. There's, I believe, Naga Oracle, a four drop that can mill a few cards that can also be useful with approach. So I don't mind it. What are the other options here? Steward, if we want to go a bit more aggressive, probably at its best in like a green white tokens deck. A lay claim, powerful mind control effect that has cycling. Uh, Binding Mummy for an aggressive zombie deck, Dauntless Aven for an exert aggro deck. And then there's a desert. Uh, I like approach. And uh, something like Renewed Faith is a pretty good combo with it. Being able to gain life and cycle. Also fan of all of the Forgotten Pharaohs if we're going to try and build a more defensive deck. Pick up a few deserts, and this can even turn into a win condition. What else do we have? A Trial of Ambition, if we get cartouches, but I don't think this is going to be a deck interested in picking up cartouches if we want to end up with a more controlling build. So maybe we take the desert and hope to wheel Renewed Faith or the wall. The green cartouche itself, of course, also very powerful. But we're going to try something a little different. Yeah, the Aven of Enduring Hope's also okay. Gains a bit of life, gives us a big flyer. Could take the Aven. And then hope to wield Renewed Faith. That way we stay in white and we don't commit to a second color yet. Our open fire is pretty good, but so is Grind to Dust. Can essentially kill two creatures. So that's quite powerful. And then we could be black whites, perhaps. Hope to wield deserts, hope to wield wall of forgotten pharaohs. But yeah, open fire is also one of the better removal spells in the set. Beneath the sands for ramp could be useful. So there's a lot of options, but I'm kind of liking six mana XL two creatures essentially. We're gonna need a bit more card draw if we want to make the approach plan work out. But I'm not going to pass up on a Desert's Hold. Three mana. Pacifism type effects also removes abilities and gains life if we control a Desert. There's also Splendid Agony, which is also great in combination with Grind to Dust. Can potentially help us take out even more creatures. I think Desert's Hold is still better. But uh, Splendid Agony is also great. There's another Cartouche. But I, again, I don't think we're doing the whole Cartouche thing. There's a Naga Oracle I mentioned earlier. So this is a great way to dig for Approach of the Second Sun. But for now we'll stick to White. Alright, so Trial of Solidarity was a very powerful card back in the day. But uh, does want to go in a more aggressive, kind of exert deck. Where giving vigilance to the team allows you to exert without having to keep your creatures tapped. But um, for the deck we're trying to build, it's probably not going to be great. So at that point we're looking at those who serve, a 2-4 blocker. Or like a wandering death. Could still take a cartouche, of course. I think we're going with uh, the 2-4 here. Bit of a strange pick. But we've got a plan in mind. Another Trial of Solidarity and a white cartouche. Yeah, I mean, someone's going to be happy with those. I don't mind the Shimmer Scale Drake. There's a Doom Dissenter as a good early blocker. Or we could take Evolving Wilds. 
to maybe splash the grind half of grind to dust and then maybe we can still pick up another secondary color. Seems reasonable. Ooh. River Hoopoo. Seventh pick. I think I gotta take it. I mean, Desert of the Glorified would be nice too. There's a Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs. But how can I pass a Hoopoo? I don't think I can do it. All right, I'll take... Hmm. Strategic planning is also pretty good with approach. So maybe we'll take that here. Over the wall. Even though I do still want to pick up some deserts. What do we have here? Seeker of Insights. Could be useful. Or we could take an Ancient Crab. Countervailing Winds also has a bit of synergy just because it cycles, so it can dig for approach. I'll take a Crab, don't know if I'll play it though. Appeal to Authority was also very good in the Green White Exert decks. But I'll take a Wall now over Forsake. Just a good defender. Just gotta make sure to pick up a few deserts. We didn't wield the blue deserts, but that's not too surprising. Alright, so we've got a bit of a mess here, but... We've got a solid base of approach. Deserts hold, hoopoo. Maybe a grind to dust we can splash. Didn't think I'm interested in any of these. And sure, I'll take the wins now. All right, second pack. I do like a trial of knowledge. Can hope to wheel Oracle. There's also final rewards, which we could splash. And the Beneath the Sands for ramp. Although it does require us to be kind of green as one of our main colors, which we could still be like green, white, splash blue, I suppose. Kind of liking the trial. And then hope to wheel Naga Oracle, which we should be able to. Yeah, the final reward is tempting too. Although I still don't know if I'm even going to splash grind to dust. Don't have that much fixing yet. Okay. Sunscorch Champion's pretty decent. Good defensive creature. Has a bit of synergy if we pick up Naga Oracle, for instance, as we can put it in the graveyard to then eternalize. I also like the Riverwinder, Sacred Cat, and Early Blocker. So there is a few options, but Sunscorch is pretty decent. Another Desert Holds, sure. Just gotta make sure we start picking up some Deserts. So Avon Wind Guide is excellent, but there's also Compulsory Rest, and for the deck we're trying to draft, I think we would prefer Compulsory Rest. And there's a chance the blue-white card wheels if no one else is drafting blue-white. Alright, so I think now I gotta take the deserts as much as I like Fanbearer, which is also quite good. We just haven't picked up any deserts so far. And they are important to enable cards like Deserts Hold. That's a pretty late Gustwalker, one of the better two drops. There's Cartouche of Knowledge to maybe combo with our Trial of Knowledge. 
Uh, Winds of Rebuke, Bound Spell could also be playable here, but kind of lacking the Cartouche, maybe give our wall flying and pick our trial back up. Desert of the Glorified, kind of on the splash. There's a Feral Prowler and another Wall of the Forgotten Pharaohs. Could still take a Desert of the Glorified, I suppose, but yeah, it's not really the color we want. Yeah, maybe go for the wall. All right, I'll take the Desert now, I suppose, over another strategic planning. The Camel would also be playable if we already had more Deserts. 3 to a lifelink. Alright, so our deck has a lot of removal, some good blockers, and an approach. Gotta hope to wield the Naga Oracle. Small chance we wield the Avon Wind Guide. Right, there's Oracle. Wow, final reward, wield 2. Kinda surprised by that. Maybe I should take the final reward. There's a chance we still get more Naga Oracles later. Yeah. Desert's great. Alright, so we've got three deserts now. Feeling a bit better about it. My only green card is River Hoopoo, so... We're blue-white, splash green, splash black. Full for grind to dust and final reward. Probably not gonna play any of these. Well, we can mill ourselves technically to get closer to approach after casting it once. So maybe I'll play it. Impeccable timing's fine too. Yeah, we've got all these good defensive white cards. Normally the problem would be finding a win condition, but since we have approach, we kind of have that covered. So we're fine to just stall out the game. Alrighty, so last pack. Hoping to get a few on-color deserts, especially the ones that cycle. Kefnuts. Kefnuts pretty good. It's a very slow card that kind of wants you to play a weird game of not casting any spells. But yeah, seems fun. And then hope to wield Desert of the True. Shimmer Scale Drake could be decent too. Probably not going to play the Elites. Would be surprised if Ancient Crab makes it. Ooh, that's a nice cast out. But man, this pack has some goodies. Desert of the Mindful, Indomitable, and Naga Oracle. Although we're pretty likely to wheel one of these three cards, I would say. So happy enough taking cast outs. We've got all the enchantment removal here, compulsory rest, cast out, and desert's hold. Ooh, dust to dawn. This is perfect, alongside our walls. Kills all the opponent's big stuff and then can aftermath to get back some smaller creatures as well. So our uh, control deck is shaping up. Hope to wield those who serve. Could still use a little bit more card draw. So wouldn't mind the illumination for instance, the 4 mana instant that draws to. But of course we have Hoopoo for card draw as well. Currently only Evolving Wilds for fixing. Alright, there's a Hieroglyphic Illumination I was talking about. Vizier of Tumbling Sands could also be okay since it helps us ramp. And there's a Renewed Faith, which I wouldn't mind, but I think it's gonna be Illumination. Give us a bit of actual card draw. And a Lake Claim, I'm not gonna pass up. Naga Oracle again would be great. I'm hoping we can wheel one of them at least. But uh, a Lake Claim it is. All 
Almighty. Probably gonna go with Shimmer Skill Drake now. As something we can cycle or a 3 4 flyer. This deck is probably fine playing 18 lands, considering we have a few deserts to cycle. Yeah, like one more desert would make this a bit better. This is a blank. Nothing I want. Yeah, I guess I'll just take the uncommon for the vault. Horror of the Broken Lands can be decent, but not in this deck. And some playable red cards as well. Alright, can we wield those Naga Oracles? We did wield Desert of the Truth, so that's perfect. Alright, if I can get the Naga Oracle, I'll be a happy man. Nothing here, maybe the Camel. Yeah, I guess with... How many deserts do we have now? Four? Might be enough. Nothing here. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're getting the Naga. Well, we did Wheel of Vizier, that's kind of surprising. But I'll take it. Don't think this is a countervailing wind deck. All right. So let's have a look at this pile. Yeah, one swamp is probably enough for the two black cards, and then probably one forest for the hoopoo. As I've said, I think I'm fine playing 18 lands in this. So it's probably going to be something along these lines. With seven blue sources and seven white, essentially. Uh, the deserts, we have more green mana than we realistically need for Hoopoo. But we just need the deserts to enable some of our synergies. And then... Let's have a look at our creatures. Mostly defensive creatures. And a Kefnet that's a little bit out of place, but it does give us a card draw engine as well, besides the Hoopoo. So I don't mind it. Supply Caravan. Can probably be cut. And then need to make two more cuts. I still like the cartouche just to give one of our walls flying. Could be good with a camel. So it's not obvious what we should cut. Strategic planning is good with approach. There is an argument for cutting Kefnet just because it doesn't help us play defense unless we get to seven cards in hand. Maybe the camel isn't good enough since we're not going to be attacking with it a whole lot. The considerations here to cut include camel, kefnet, maybe cartouche. Because uh, trial of knowledge is still fine without a cartouche. Just gets a lot better if we also play both. This is a nice sweeper. So removal is pretty decent here. I'm just worried about taking damage early on from smaller creatures. That can potentially also dodge Dusk to Dawn. Something like a Gustwalker could be annoying, so that's where the extra flying cartouche could be helpful. I feel like Kefnet's just going to be too slow. Our deck already kind of is going to struggle to find the right colors. Kefnet is a card draw engine. And I guess it can block as a 5-5 indestructible. It is also just kind of a fun card to play with. 
We don't strictly need the black splash, but it's not a very high cost to include it in a sense, because we want to be playing the desert anyway, even as, as an off-color desert. And we have an evolving wild, so it just takes one swamp to get two pretty premium black cards. So if we want to keep Gafnets for fun, then it's probably Camel that goes. And then maybe Cartouche. Most of my creatures already have flying. Alright, let's cut the Cartouche. We might struggle to deploy it with so few creatures in the first place. And then the mana base. Yeah, it looks about right. Seven-ish white sources and seven blue. Three black, four green. Although I imagine we'll cycle the desert a decent amount of the time. Okay. I think we've got our deck. I mean, we do have a hoopoo. So I feel like this works. And for deck name, are you winning, son? All right, we've got a winner. Well, I can cast a turn to Hoopoo. I wouldn't be activating it for a while. Although I can cycle Vizier if needed. Really, if we draw planes, this hand's great. If not, I can always fetch for a planes and be sad we can't cast a Hoopoo for a while. Alright, there we go. Fetch a forest. Naga Vitalist, that's another good one. Um, yeah, I guess we'll play Hoopoo here, and then next turn Vizier can also be hard cast if we want. Ooh, that's scary. Probably want to put that to rest. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to be hitting our next couple land drops, so I'm not really in a hurry to cast the Vizier necessarily. So instead I could cycle it and then still compulsory rest the Crocodile, which seems fine. So... Cycle. Untap my land. Grind to dust could also be quite powerful here. And then next turn we can play Tap Desert, maybe Desert's Fault something. And next turn we can activate Hoop if we want. <laughs> okay. Huh? Now I'm kind of regretting using both my removal spells already. So I can grind to set up dust next turn. Which is going to be quite strong. Uh, so I can put counter here, counter here. Or I could wait until I can cast both in the same turn. But if I don't draw land next turn I wouldn't be able to. Because it's mostly the surprise factor, like if my opponent plays another big creature next turn, then I can maybe get rid of the worm and whatever else they play. So I'm not sure. I think I'm just gonna grind these two. And play Kefnet then. So we'll take a hit from the worm. And next turn we can clean up nicely. A feral prowler, that's fine. Alright, so we're stable. 
think I still play my land, but we can soon start activating Kefnets. So... They can sacrifice a crocodile to gain some life. No attack with the Hoopoo, just blocks the Prowler. There's an argument for blocking Vitalist instead. If they have a combat trick, I don't want to kill the Prowler and let them draw a card. Alright, so... Could play Shimmer Skill Drake to start killing them, or we can draw cards, which is more fun. And I don't think we're going with the Kefnet plan here. Let's just go for Hoopoo. I guess with seven lands in play, don't need to play out more lands unless we want to like double activate. Okay. I guess I can strategic planning. I mean, I can get enough cards in hand probably to block with Kefnet now. I guess we can find a removal. So let's do it like this. All right. How about we grab a lay claim and then let this go to the graveyard? And then, yeah, I guess we're going to be one card short of Kefnet being active. But that's okay. So maybe just cast a Drake then. And then next turn I could lay claim. I'll just stay back for now. Not really planning on winning with damage. All right. So we have to block that creature. All creatures able to block it. All right. I'm guessing they're going to take out my Drake. The Hoopoo lives. And those who serve as an excellent blocker. And then we can still activate Kefnet if we want, or cast Illumination. Alright. Yeah, Kefnet hasn't done much so far, <laughs> but soon it will. Picking up our lands can be useful if we want to cycle a desert or just to get seven cards in hand faster. We could do this plus Kefnets. Sure. I guess we'll start attacking. Alright, opponent packs it in, just too much card advantage here. Alright, so we have a Hoopoo. No green mana. Couple cards we can cycle for one. We're on the play. Yeah, it's not amazing, but it's also not the worst. And then I might want to cycle cast out over Illumination. Do I cycle turn one is a question. I 
guess I could wait a turn to see if I draw land. Alright, that's great. So, probably just gonna fetch... I could also fetch my Swamp, to be fair. Since we have more green sources, we can draw naturally. Gives us access to grind. Yeah, grabbing a Swamp might be best. Labyrinth Guardian. Alright, so that can just die if we target it. So I want to wait for a second target. And then I'll hang on to cast out for one more turn at least. Could cycle Vizier untapping my islands. And then still cycle like an Illumination now that we picked up Trial. Just worry about hitting my land drops. That's a land drop, although it's tapped. Alright, that's better. So can I hang on to cast out. And then grind seems like pretty good value. Then probably just play Tap Deserts. Okay, there's my green mana for Hoopoo. So it seems like a reasonable turn for Trial. What do we get rid of? Planes, maybe? Since I still need double blue, so we're gonna need to draw another land. Okay, so we have a lot of options now. We can always cast dust out of the graveyard, of course. I don't hate casting dust before they exert and get their two extra damage in. Could cast out a Ritualist, or we can just cast out whatever they ramp into, or we can Dusk it. Or lay claim it now that we drew the second island. So, yeah, I'm liking... Dusts plus Hoopoo. And the 1-3 can also block the Ritualist now. If they kill the Hoopoo, I was gonna say, without exiling it, we can get it back with Dawn. Now we cannot. Should probably hang on to my uh, desert now. Could have tapped differently, so I could have cycled my desert by keeping green untapped. Right, crocodile. Might be worth stealing, or we can dusk, but then we also lose our drake. So maybe I just wait an extra and cast out. Because I imagine our opponent's going to have some bigger, better things for us to steal. And there's the approach. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just going to pass with a plan of using Cast Out on a Crocodile. Mm -hmm. 
Ominous Sphinx. Yeah, that's probably worth stealing. Or holding. Don't really care that they shrink down my power. So if, if I were to Desert Sold, what else can I do? Five mana. Not really enough to do anything. Could just take a turn off cast approach. And then take a hit from the Sphinx. Which is also reasonable. Maybe they end up using removal on the Drake and I can and they cast another big creature we dusk. It's possible they have a counter spell. Alright, so no removal on Drake, I'll take four. Even though there is a chance we end up casting Dusk and killing our own Drake. Well, I think we found the card we want to steal. Now, our opponent could still have a counterspell, and it's possible they've been waiting to play Scarab God with counterspell backup. Uh, do we have the mana to lay claim and Desert's Hold, is a question. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, one short. Or we can just Dusk, but then we kill our own Drake and they still get the Scarab God back. So I think we got a late claim and hope they don't have a counterspell left. Although if, if we know for a fact they have a counterspell, then the play might be Dusk to bait out the counter and then Desert Soul Scarab God. Although it doesn't feel as good as just stealing it. Let's see. Guess we'll play land first. If it's like a countervailing win, so we might be able to pay for it. Alright. That works. So we gotta make some blocks. It's possible they have a pump spell. And the attack with the 4 4 is a little suspicious, I guess. But I can't really afford to take 8. Yeah, I think this is my block. Could also technically chump with my Drake. Like if their plan is just to cycle to shrink down Scarab God, I'm pretty happy. Alright, Splendid Agony. It's too bad, so Scarab God goes back. So no upkeep, Scarab God activation. So how deep is approach? Still pretty far. Now, the good news is that we can now Dusk without losing the Drake. Bad news is Scarab God is gonna wreak havoc on our board. Yeah, casting Dusk feels pretty bad, but... I think I gotta do it. Yeah, we're gonna leave enough mana to Scarab God activates. So we're gonna get another 4-4. Four, four. If 
are two or less. Sadly, the Hoopoo got exiled, so it doesn't do anything for me. So yeah, we're just passing, and then... Doesn't look like we're gonna get to approach in time. Scarab God also still drains us for one. So this has me taking five. And then next turn I would be dead to Scarab God, so I'm hoping to top deck another Desert Hold to gain life. Don't really see a better way out. If we top deck, let's see, have we drawn our... We could still top deck strategic planning to draw into approach and win. So that's another out. But given that we can draw Desert Hold, I think we're still fine making this block over chumping. All right, I think we did it. Yes, please. Thank you very much. And approach number two. Oof, it's not every day that you beat a Scarab God coming back. How do we feel about this hand? <laughs> We've got a Hoopoo, a Swamp and a Plains. Although, to be fair, we also have a grind to dust, which is a great way to catch back up. Can cycle Lake Claim. Can cast Champion with any land. Yeah, I mean... Okay, okay. I think this uh, lay claim is going to get cycled. Author plans at 7 mana. Well, well, well. Probably go with champion. Hold, grind, until we can get a nice two-for-one. Okay, maybe Hoopoo plus grind on turn four. Just like we expected when keeping this hand. Yeah, cycling a cast out probably means they're light on lands or action. Or they have a second one. Don't really want to grind for just a companion. Don't want a desert soul to either. So next turn if we want, we could get up to seven cards in hand with Kefnet. Although now I'm also kind of liking Grind. Kill Companion, Shrink Haven. And then Hoopoo could even block the Haven. And we do want to keep playing out our lands to get to approach eventually, so I don't think we're on the Kefnet 7 cards plan. Got both our card draw birds in play. So next turn I would love to just activate Hoopoo. Hit our land drops for approach and hold planning until after approach again. Yeah, Among Cat Remastered is a much wider format than, let's say, the uh, recent Forgotten Realms. Where Black Red is like 20% of the metagame at least. 
probably more. I mean, this is kind of a free attack on their part. I don't want to lose to Hupu, but if we do, we still have Kefnet. All right. So play desert, activate Hupu seems fine. All right, it is war that you want. Approach seems good enough. And then next turn maybe cast out plus Desert's Hold. Impeccable timing is decent too. So Dusk can still clear the Great Maw. So I could go Dust plus Desert's Hold the Aven maybe. Then is it time for planning now? I think so. I guess Drake we can cycle. Yeah, so can can cycle and then next turn just cast approach, so we should have it here. Can cast out cycle Drake. Probably shouldn't have tapped my planes last turn. Or we can timing. Activate Kefnet also works. <laughs> Double compulsory rest. And an explosion. Compulsory rest doesn't remove abilities, if I'm not mistaken, so would not have been incredibly effective against uh, Kefnet or Hupu. Alrighty. Hand looks keepable. Hmm, I should probably go with the Hupu mana. Just in case. Adventure is a good one. I think this late claim is getting cycled again. Dust to Dawn could be effective. A swamp here would have been juicy. Kind of like compulsory rest on the Aven, so we can keep Dusk for Avenger and maybe future creatures. And then keep Desert Sold in case we pick up a Desert later. All 
right, so we can dusk just for the one for one. That's probably fine. Next turn, play even. Alright. Yeah, the fact that this had flash definitely paid off. Another three powered creature. Yeah. Could have been uh, better off waiting. Although this is still one toughness, so it still dies to grind. So how about we go Desert's Fold after playing Desert on the Avon instead of playing our own. So next turn I can grind and dust in the same turn. Our game plans just survive until we can approach, pretty much. All right. They could have some removal in hand that doesn't do anything. Ooh, never mind. Sphinx's revelation for three. And there's Hoopoo, but here's an approach first. We've made our intentions clear. Let's see how the opponent responds. Drake isn't bad. Second Illumination, still Hoopoo. Yeah, our opponent's probably going to need a counter spell to survive this. Don't really see them dealing 17 damage. Can't even get back our Hoopoo with Dawn at some point if it dies. Okay, so how much mana do we have? Eight. So, can activate Hoopoo Cycle Deserts. And then next turn we would win with Approach. Gotta watch out for something like Trial pumping their creatures by two. Although Hoopoo can always jump. So I think we're fine to do that. And then I can do everything at instant speed. So if they're tapped out even better, then we don't need to worry about a counter spell. Put on desperately cycling. And that should be game. I think our opponent will have to change their name after this. Well, this one better than expected. 7-1. Lost a close game and then won most of our games with approach or just to the opponent scooping to our inevitable card draw engines. So yeah, four colors can be a thing in Among Cat Remastered, the format does kind of lend itself to some slower strategies and some uh, pretty sweet, unique decks-like approach. Let's crack some packs. Still missing a lot of rares and mythics from the set. Pack one, pick one. What do we like? Sand Strangler is amazing if you can get enough deserts to make it work. A nice Flame Tongue Kavu. Uh, interventions, kind of whatever. Bone picker can be okay, kind of difficult to enable at times. So, yeah, probably Sand Strangler here. 
and then prioritize the deserts. Prepare to fight, a powerful combo trick. Being able to untap a creature, great with Exert, of course. And uh, some good blue cards with Eternal and Sensor. Nahab, the Worthy. There's a couple Minotaurs in the set. Although, wouldn't necessarily want to first pick it. Spring to mind is fun if you like rampy dirtly decks, which I'm a fan of at least. Uh, the pain caster can be good too. Cartouche for the hyper aggressive decks, so you can go in a lot of different directions based on what your preferred playstyle is, which is not something you can really say from some of the more recent standard sets. Rags to riches, another fun dirtly card. Sweeper on the front half and the mind control on the back. And the crocodile is very good too. Or a mirage mirror, quite powerful too. Just copy the biggest bomb in play. Nothing else that's too exciting. Some powerful five drops, but don't think we want to be first picking those. And the Vizier of Many Faces as our last one. Another very strong card. Thanks to Embalm bringing it back, so we get two uses out of it. And then uh, Fanbearer, great for the black-white zombie archetype. Billful Amet, probably at its best in black-green, where you've got some minus one counter synergies. All right, sweet. So yeah, make sure to claim your free Amoncat Remastered draft if you haven't already. We've got time until the 15th of August, so... Get in there and have some fun. But for now, want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.